Hi everyone, I'm Joey. Uh, so it's a little bit different video uh, this time around. You might remember a little while ago. Uh, I made this walnut island. So it's going obviously in this kitchen. I made all these cabinets as well. So I'm going to show a bit about uh, how these kit units will make together and installing the island. And uh, before that, I needed to make a barn door uh, for the same job. So I'll show that first and then we'll get on to the kitchen install. Okay, so these bound doors are going to be made out of knotty cedar, uh, the same timber that uh, is on the cladding of the house, the weatherboards. And it's going to be finished with a show, so should you barn finish, something like that. I'm sorry for my pronunciation. Essentially, we're going to burn, burn it to make it look nice and black, or dark at least. Uh, the good thing with these bound doors is the joinery doesn't really matter. I'm going to use a couple of, uh, or four, large bridle joints to hold the main frame together. Um, and really the cool thing about these kind of things is you can do whatever you like because essentially the bolts from the barn door hardware is going to hold everything together. Right, with most of the waste uh, removed with the bandsaw, I could uh, finish up with the chisel and get on to making the tenons for the cross members. So then I could dry fit everything. You'll notice everything's fairly easy to go together. The joints are a bit loose but that's also to do with the um, the, the large I guess mortise part uh, flares out a bit when you remove so much and so that does create some looseness to the joint. Uh, secondly I don't really mind if it's loose it's going to be epoxy it's going to be pinned and bolted together so it doesn't really make too much difference at this stage but with the main frame made I needed to make the tongue groove paneling to go inside of that so I do all that on the router table The boards that touch the outside frame of the door, I'm offsetting the tongue so the groove isn't so close to the edge of the, the main frame of the door. And then I can set up my special jig to make tongues on the ends of those boards. So some extra strength in the corners and I think it just look kind of cool to have some large dowels pinning the joints together. Mainly this will show at the bottom but you will also see it at the top next to the hardware. Uh, so the main focus of this door is a large X brace right through the middle of the uh, door which the clients really wanted. That's the whole point about making this door. and. It's not doing anything at all, which is another cool thing about barn doors is that the bracing is kind of null and void and so you can do any shape you like and not have to worry about any kind of particular joinery, you just fit the pieces in to where they need to go. I'm marking out here to add some dominoes into that joint just to keep everything together really well uh, we're assembling it.
So with the X in, we flip the door and I cut off some of these small headed stainless screws and add a one screw into the center of each board. So that's screwing the X brace on and holding the boards in place uh, with the right spacings so they don't rattle around. Uh, then the whole thing gets a sand, fit the hardware for the sliding part, and uh, off to the blowtorch. Right, so first of all I bought a special blowtorch heat gun thingamajig that attaches to uh, like a barbecue style gas bottle. Uh, this is a, a torch used for waterproofing membranes and all sorts of stuff. Um, and really it was just kind of working out how to use it as I did the job. Um, I've never burnt something like this size before so it was just a matter of burning a little bit and then doing a little bit more and doing a little bit more until I got an even kind of and texture and depth of color that I was after. And um, it worked out all right in the end. It's not stupendously easy to get an even texture because of the dent different densities of the timber and the different amounts of oil and different boards it was burning quicker here and not there and um, but in the end after probably I don't know probably about an hour um, got it sorted out and so then I could add a couple of coats of water-based polyurethane and I was actually planning to do three coats but after two it was just looking really good and felt awesome. Okay so on site now and I could reinstall the hardware and get ready to hang it. First working out exactly where to drill some holes. It seemed that the floor had a 12 millimeter hump right where we didn't want it to be. Uh, you couldn't actually notice it at all when you're walking around, but um, the door told the story. So after much kind of conversation, conversation, converse conversing I decided just to cut the bottom of the door and that seemed to do the job just right and uh, that's just one of the types of things that happens on installs pretty regularly you can never tell what you're going to have to do when you actually get to site and that's the barn door part of this job. And so now I'm going to start showing you some of the rest of the cabinet installs we did. So firstly in the scullery, the small room off the kitchen, we did a whole bunch of um, plywood, walnut plywood uh, cabinets to go up on the wall. And I had my dad helping out on this day because there was uh, a lot of cabinetry to get in, a lot of lifting and was an extra brain on site. So at this stage is generally just lots of getting the right carcasses into the right position and trying to level everything up, uh, drill holes for plumbing and cables and um, generally try and put things where they should be. Uh, with that done I could lift in the large uh, butler's sink, extremely heavy uh, porcelain sinks one in the main kitchen area, one in the scullery and also carry on with getting the fridge uh, carcasses and panels in place so then I could go back to uh, sealing up the front edges of the butler's sinks now usually when I do corking I would use my finger but whenever you use silicon it's an extremely bad idea to use your finger as you end up uh, imparting your own kind of bacteria onto the silicon you end up getting mold okay with the main carcass of the kitchen kind of in place we could start bringing in the large kitchen island 
this was meant to break down into two parts, but I ended up just leaving it as one because it fitted in my van with about three mils to spare. And so we could just lift it into position. So the placement of the island was very specific. They had, they're going to have three big pendant lights hanging down from the ceiling. So we had uh, the center light I hooked a plumb bob onto, and we needed to measure that that light was going to hang exactly center of the island. So that's what we're doing here, just working out exactly where we are in the kitchen, moving it around a little bit. And so when the lights go in, that will be perfect. Now all the show panels of this kitchen, uh, the doors and drawer fronts and such, are uh, a therma wrap finish over MDF core. So it's essentially like a plastic sheet which is kind of vacuum formed over a, a piece of MDF. Uh, they specifically wanted that, my clients, and so that's uh, what they got. Uh, so now that everything's on site, I can add all the brackets to the drawer fronts and etc. and put them in place. Unfortunately, my camera broke right about here, so you don't get that particular piece of footage. But I can carry on with the getting the island sorted out as well, getting the skirtings on, or fitting them at least. So any of the carcasses that don't have services like plumbing, etc., uh, we just throw some silicon on the adjustable feet and push on the toe kick and then using a water-based white uh, sealant just fill in any, any uh, gaps and joints uh, you, sometimes you'd leave these without corking but in this case I think it was all generally agreed by everyone that it would look much better if it was all sealed and I think it looks pretty good We also added this little uh, drinks kind of bar unit and that's going to be in, in a cupboard and down the hallway. So that will fit it in really nice. It has some LED lighting that turns on when the door opens at some point. Uh, the other part of this job was to install the, uh, the laundry units. Uh, the difference with the laundry units is that it's all painted a paint finish that I did in the workshop uh, just to save some money. The client doesn't didn't think it was necessary to have the therma wrap finish down here which makes perfect sense and the bench top in here is also a red oak whereas the rest of the kitchen is going to have stone tops So I had to uh, cut a giant hole in the top for the sink. I uh, would have ordinarily done this in the workshop, but the client was having trouble sourcing the right size one. 
Uh, so I had to do it on site, which is not particularly fun, but yeah, it's doable. Uh, but before I put the sink in permanently, I need to mask and seal where the bench top meets the wall. This is actually a requirement here, so I have to do it. And that is uh, white silicon. I managed to pull some fresh paint off the wall. Good thing the paint is coming back for some other touch ups. So the end grain, or anywhere really, that I cut and exposed fresh timber needs sealed up. And ideally I would have done it in the workshop with clear coat, but seeing as I'm on site and doing it in one day, I'm using the clear silicon to squish into the end grain and seal that up in case of any leaks. Uh, and then seal around the edge of the hole, drop the sink in, weight it down, make sure it's in the right place. And any squeeze out, I will come back and cut that later on. So then it was time for handles and then that was pretty much it for this job for me. Okay, so uh, unfortunately I don't have any really good finished pictures of any one particular part of it, um, of the kitchen. I did take a few pictures, but this is my camera. So anyway, I hope uh, you know, got some insight uh, to what uh, it's like working on site and um, you know, what the other part of my job is, which is not in the workshop. I thought I'd just ask uh, if anyone's got any questions they want to ask me, I'm going to do an Ask Me Anything video before Christmas. So type in the comments down below if you want. Anything you want to ask me, if you've got anything, <laughs> um, and I'll endeavor to answer all those questions uh, in that video. Uh, otherwise, uh, thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.